Reading the Signs. In my interview with surf legend Wayne Lynch, he said some things that were really interesting. For example, when I asked him about surviving sharks, he said, well, I learned how to read the signs, and I don't mean the signs posted on the beach. While many of you instantly know what he's referring to, there are some people who do not. So what signs does he mean? And are we paying attention to those signs? This got me thinking about all the news articles in which it stated that the bite victim had been warned about sharks in the vicinity or that the beach was closed and got in anyway. Are we worse at being aware of bad conditions or are we worse at doing the right thing when bad conditions are present or a combination? Or do we simply not care? But whether we care or not, the end consequence is negative for the shark because it gets a worse reputation and in many cases it fuels the fire for killing sharks. So then I thought, what if the shark attack databases included a category that showed all the shark attacks that had occurred when humans ignored the warning signs all in one column so that it was easy to see just how many of them were avoidable? Would that actually help improve perceptions of sharks? But maybe and more importantly, would that help people preserve themselves? Would people see that and say, well, what happened in this scenario? What happened in this scenario? Maybe there's something to learn here. Maybe I could not do what they did. Look, predators exist in the ocean, but when we go in the ocean, we are in an even more vulnerable state than if we were to encounter a predator on land. So what do we do? Go out and preemptively kill everything that could kill us? Or what about learning how to improve our self-preservation? Warning signs come in different forms. There are the warnings that are provided by nature if you have learned how to see those signs. And there are more obvious signs that are provided by humans, such as lifesavers or your city council, like putting a post in the ground that says don't swim, or flying a shark flag, or sounding a siren, or sending out tweets um, that say, hey, shark spotted, or these are unfavorable conditions. With today's technology, there's a limited number of ways that we could get a warning out to people. And in many cases we do, but people ignore those warnings anyway, which complicates this particular topic even further. Going through the global shark attack file, it will blow your mind how many of the incidents came directly after the victims had been warned with examples that I just provided for you. The warnings were heard, seen, and ignored. Now in this video, I'm not going to say the names of the bite victims, and I'm not going to say things like people deserved to be bitten. Uh, that's just unnecessarily mean, and it's not the point of the video. But I am listing the links to the incidents so that you know I'm not just making these things up. Not only am I providing the original news article, but I have cross-referenced it with the global shark attack file to make sure that they also looked into it and confirmed that it was a legitimate incident. But I would invite you to consider this. If it was flipped around, let's say you're at home watching the Nature Channel and it's any other species that's the subject other than humans, and for example, you see a baby seal go swimming off by itself into an area where the sharks are patrolling, you might say something a little judgmental, such as, oh, it's gonna get it. You're kinda asking for it. Why don't any of the rules that apply to every other animal on the planet apply to us? Why don't we have to adhere to self-preserving behavior? I'll give a few examples in a moment, but first let's talk about nature's warning signs for a minute. Um, Wayne provided a few examples. He learned to watch the behavior of birds that actually indicated the presence of sharks, the behavior of other fish, the, the weather. Um, he had developed a connection with the ocean in which he believes he almost had a sixth sense that kind of gave him an eerie feeling that said, don't get in. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm an expert at reading the signs of nature, but I can tell you that I will not get in the ocean and swim if a dead whale has been floating around and oozing out its shark attractant scent. Scuba dive, maybe. Swim, no. Why would I scuba dive in that condition? Well, that's a different video. But back to nature's warning signs. 
Are we as a species getting worse at being able to read those warning signs? Do we as a species even take time to have a chance to see those warning signs? As Wayne pointed out, surfers, not just surfers, swimmers, anyone who wants to use the ocean are coming from all walks of life. They didn't necessarily grow up with the ocean developing this understanding of the ocean. In some cases, even if you did grow up on the coast, you're just trying to get in a quick surf in the morning before you get off to work. We're all busy. We all have a limited amount of time. I get it. But if you aren't going to take the time to observe the conditions of an active ecosystem that you're about to thrust yourself into, you kind of need to expect some possible consequences. God knows we have ample information out there if we choose to tap into it, but is that the type of information that we are keying into? As Dr. Chris Lowe so wonderfully puts in a quote in my interview with him, we are a growing population with a decreasing ability to assess our own risk and then act accordingly. Now, you don't have to stay out of the ocean when a shark has been spotted. In fact, to assume that you will be bitten because a shark is present would be wrong. It's very possible that you have been in the water with sharks without knowing it. Just because somebody saw a shark doesn't mean that that is when the shark became present. Shark presence does not mean shark threat. And even when someone has been bitten, you still don't necessarily have to get out. That's still not a guarantee that you'll be bitten. In fact, many people choose to get in after a bite anyway, which we'll get to in a little bit. Let's look at some examples. Wait, before we do that, why am I doing this? Yes, I am a shark advocate, and yes, I do want the relationship between humans and sharks to improve. I don't like the idea of killing things as a retaliation when something goes wrong, but probably more important than that is that this, in my opinion, is actually your best bet for improving your chances of survival, increasing your knowledge and using that knowledge to preserve yourself as opposed to, say, the solution of throwing baited hooks in the ocean or nets that indiscriminately kill everything that comes in their path. Here we go. Fish hook, South Africa. It's a fishing town within False Bay, and it doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to a place that you should go swimming and not expect an encounter with a shark. Having said that, in this case, a guy got in the water when the shark flag was flying, when the sirens had gone off, when the warnings had been issued, at the time of the bite, he was the only human in that water. Again, I'm not going to say the names of the victims. The point isn't to bash them. The point is to look at behavior in which we could improve. Moving on, let's jump over to Hawaii. A kayak fisherman is bitten on his leg when he's dangling his feet in the water from the kayak in which he is fishing in waters known to be filled with tiger sharks. Not only that, he and his colleagues reportedly knew that their fishing activity attracted the sharks and made them more aggressive. Let that sink in for a little bit. Reunion Island, a guy gets in at a spot where it is actually forbidden to get in because of the history of shark activity in that particular area and he had been warned by individuals. Or this guy who, along with his friends, saw a shark, decided it was worth staying out and ended up being bitten. But worse is that seven hours later, a guy who heard about that guy being bitten gets in anyway and is also bitten. What's unknown was that there was a dead whale floating in the area which likely contributed to a heightened hunting behavior or feeding behavior of the shark, which is not a great time to be in the water with the sharks. But again, I'm not trying to bash on those guys. They were actually cool about it. They did not call for a calling of the sharks. Um, they accepted the consequences, but that doesn't stop this from going down as headlines that say, ah, oh, double shark attack, we've got to kill sharks, and the people that hate sharks jump on it and use it for fuel to fire the shark calling. And on top of all of that, it of course goes down in the shark attack database. A little side topic with that example, 
with the whale that was in the area. No one had actually known about that until afterwards. So whose responsibility is it to know about that whale? Should the beaches be patrolled so thoroughly that there's no way something like that escapes the authority's eye and they can issue the warning on time? Or is it your responsibility before you decide to enter an ecosystem to find out everything that you can about the current conditions? And of course, the even more complicated side topic of that is, would people stay out of the water even if they did know? Sounds like in this case, the guys were the type that probably would have gotten in anyway. And indeed, there are tons of examples of people getting in the ocean right after a shark bite. And they actually usually get away with it. I can go on with those type of examples forever. Let's look at a different type of fucking up. For example, a boy sticks his finger into the mouth of a shark at an aquarium after being told repeatedly not to do it. And guess what? He cuts his finger. Tiny little cut, boy shoved his finger in the shark's mouth, goes down as a shark attack in the shark attack database. They were nice enough to say that it was provoked, but unless you're going to actually research that particular incident instead of just see that it's one of many in a long list of shark attacks in the file, it just makes sharks look even worse. Related topic, in case you don't know this, when a fisherman hooks a shark and drags it onto his boat, if that shark should manage to get hold of that fisherman somehow, that also is a shark attack. Yes, an animal fighting for its life is not allowed to fight back without it going down as a shark attack. Yes, it goes in the provoked category, but as we already mentioned, it's really just another statistic against sharks. And no, it does not matter if the fisherman intended to release that shark. The shark still went through all the trauma of being hooked and dragged and fought and pulled out of the water. I don't know why people think that sharks are magically unharmed just because they're released. Or how about this ass clown who decides to shoot a shark as it's swimming by? Guess what? Shark attack. And in yet another category, you have people who pay the consequences for other people's behavior. For example, Tothra, New South Wales, 2014. A woman who has been swimming in the same place every day for 14 years without incident ends up losing her life when shark fishermen are illegally shark fishing in that area. In fact, it was found that they had chum floating right in the line where the swimmers are known to swim as part of their swimming club. Did anything happen to those fishermen? No. Are they calling sharks in New South Wales? Yes. Not long after that, over in the United States, a similar incident in which an angler is fishing off a of Manhattan Beach Pier, an area known for surfers and juvenile white sharks to share the water, hooks a great white shark, bites it for 40 minutes before finally cutting it loose. The shark and the swimmer run into each other. The agitated shark bites the guy. Anything happened to that fisherman? No, but it's a shark attack. No matter what the circumstances were, it's chalked up as a shark attack. And even if it was a boy shoving a finger in the shark's mouth, even if there wasn't even an injury involved, it's listed as a shark attack and it's in the newspaper headlines. Again, I'm not saying sharks don't bite people. I'm not saying they won't continue to in the future. I'm asking you to look at the results of our own choices and how that affects the reputation of the other animal that's involved. You ready to go? It's hot out here.